Hey guys, Big Al here. Today we have our um, Ruger M77 in 243 Winchester and we are going to attempt a bedding job on it. I've never done a bedding job and nothing has been done to this gun um, when it comes to bedding at all besides the cuts for the um, uh, barrel channel and action. So we will be uh, attempting that today. Um, uh, it's pretty simple, but it is easy to get messed up and wrong. So I'm going to try to be careful in what I'm doing. And um, we'll see you when we start disassembling this rifle. So at the beginning of this video, I did not record uh, any audio for some reason. So this is just me uh, disassembling the gun, taking off the front action screw. Um, and the uh, hinged floor plate assembly, and the middle action screw in the front of the trigger guard, and the rear action screw, and the whole entire trigger guard. Then taking the stock from the barreled action. Then I set the uh, barreled action uh, on the bench. Now I'm removing the bolt. Next thing is going to be removing the trigger. I have a video on uh, the trigger replacement that shows you how this works in much more detail, so I did not go into depth here. Just remove the trigger pin, trigger spring, and trigger. And there you have it. Okay, so after we have the um, gun disassembled um, to the barreled action and the trigger removed, <clears throat> we are going to determine where we want to bed this. So when it comes to the action, um, we are going to only bed two points, the front and the rear of the action right here, where the recoil lug and front action screw are, and right back here, where the tang is and the rear action screw <coughs> is. The reason we're going to do this is this being a wood stock if we full length bed it, the um, the stock over time may um, make some uh, different uh, changes in torque or in um, how the wood grain goes. So if the whole thing's um, bedded, it can actually move the whole bedding, and it will not be um, very helpful. So, but by doing two points, we limit that by putting them in small uh, areas, and it still can bed firmly without being uh, too much. So the uh, surfaces that are going to be bedded are going to be about from here. It um, That's the ideal area. It will probably seep up into around here, which we'll cover later. And all around this action um, uh, recoil lug here and front action screw. Um, this is the front of the action. And we're actually going to bed farther up a little bit probably about to where the barrel starts uh, straightening out um, about three four inches uh, up the barrel we'll see uh, as it goes I the reason I'm doing that is because uh, one person I saw when they were doing an M77 this is the angle that the screws going in because of that it can um, have some an odd uh, torque to the um, to the action, so uh, to keep the barrel straight and not, and uh, afterward we're going to free float this. Um, to keep the barrel straight, we need to make sure that um, the barrel is bedded out to about here. So <clears throat> that's what we are going to do. Um, so that's what it looks like from the action side. Now let's take a look at the stock side. Here we have our stock. That is where that rear tang fits in. And that is where that recoil lug and front action screw fit in. I have made small marks with a pencil that are probably hard for you to see here, but it's just reference points. Right here, it's just all around this area. I don't want to go too far back because I do want it to be able to sit on some of that surface. I am probably, uh, these pencil marks are for where I want the epoxy, but also where. I'm going to use a Dremel tool and go down a little bit just to um, give the epoxy somewhere to sit. <clears throat> There's not going to be much epoxy put on this um, part of the gun. 
part of the stock so just all around this hole here but um, not up into these sides it will flow a little bit into there but um, just a minimal amount on the front though there's going to be quite a bit more stopping back here um, I'm going to focus only on this recoil lug area right the immediate surfaces right on each side of it and uh, a thin um, set of epoxy up into about that point up into the uh, barrel channel so that's where we'll be placing our epoxy uh, a few things we need to do before we um, start putting the epoxy down is to uh, prepare both the stock and the barrel to accept the epoxy and to be able to come apart and not be glued together forever so we will get into that next before we apply any uh, wax to uh, the metal components we're gonna wipe everything down with some alcohol to make sure that there isn't any uh, any just debris that's gonna um, inhibit uh, the uh, wax from staying on the surface of the metal. Now we're ready for some of the wax. Now we're going to put some wax on it. The reason we're going to do this is so we can remove the um, metal from the uh, stock once uh, the epoxy is done drying. Otherwise, it'll just stick to the stock and that'll be all I can ever possibly do with the gun. Uh, this is um, some Imperial case sizing wax seems like a good wax. I don't know if that's what people are using, but that's what I'm going to use here. So we'll see if that works. Also, if you didn't uh, wipe down the other metal components like the uh, trigger guard or the screws with alcohol, make sure you do that. When it comes to the wax, um, this is the most important part because if the uh, bedding doesn't work, you know, we can just redo it. If the um, gun doesn't come out of the stock, then we can't do anything about that. So, we have to make sure that um, this is done well and done right. So I have a brush, some q-tips, and my fingers, and we will just apply it all over every metal part um, that, that we can. Um, we don't want to get too much of a glob on it but more of a, uh, a film uh, so that um, it doesn't change the uh, dimensions so that when it sits into the epoxy that it will be the correct make the correct indentation and bed it perfectly um, but yes this is the most important part and we cannot um, do this enough, we should spare uh, neither effort nor time to get this right, because as I've heard, that epoxy has a um, tendency to get everywhere, so we need to make sure all components of this action and barrel are covered in wax just getting the main parts here as I will find out later it would benefit you if you applied even more wax just make sure everything is covered literally everything um, just because that epoxy anything that's six to it, it's just done scope. it will I don't know if it'll just do stick that to the bad, stock and then it'll rip up the wood I if you can get it apart if not scope, then you're so. done so apply more wax something. It won't look much different after, but I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done and all the things I did. I'm going to use those Q-tips to get into the screw holes 
and um, all around the uh, screws themselves and in the thread so I'll see you when I'm there okay so I finished um, putting the wax on all the components <clears throat> took me a while I hope it's enough I'm just I'm not quite sure we'll see kinda has to be cuz otherwise we ain't getting this gun back apart so yeah um, then I uh, I kind of like chiseled out where the uh, box is going to go and then I taped the edges so if any seeps out that I can just remove it from the tape instead of it ruining the wood do that on the where it can impact the stock and just most places so now we will mix the epoxy and apply it once we start that we have to go quick because epoxy dries fast while I was monitoring to make sure the, everything um, is in place uh, and drying time of the epoxy uh, I found well that it was not as critical to go hardened. quite as fast as I so, did you could probably go for like start mixing it up to 30 minutes. Due to concerns with time video. constraints, so I am just, just going to mind. show you how I'm going to do this, but I don't think I'll have a video running while I'm actually doing it. So I have my two part epoxy. I'm going to mix a good amount, um, uh, equal amount, uh, into this can. I'm going to use these popsicle sticks and one cut in half and maybe a spoon to mix them and apply them. Um, just so we're on the same page here, I am applying it to that area around that rear action screw at the tang, and then this area from about here all the way out to about there, and um, yeah, we're going to uh, do that, make sure we get it all nice and well inside the... Um, uh, recoil lug uh, recess and that will be it and then when I put it together I'm going to just try to do that as quickly as I can so that I do not have any issues with time so it uh, dries pretty quickly and then once we get it set then I'll probably be able to put the camera back on so we'll see you then Here's what it looks like once I finished applying it. Just have a little bit back around that hole there. There is a better angle on it. And then a lot in there in the uh, reload co recoil lug recess along that flat and along that barrel channel part way. Now I'm going to quickly put this gun back together and tighten it down and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I got it back together. Um, it went in nicely. Putting the magazine upside down, so I re-put it in. I'm going to leave the hinge floor plate open because I don't see any advantage in keeping it in. I tightened the front and rear action screws to just barely finger tight, and um, the middle action screw I didn't want to mess with because it, it's not going to be bedded off of anything there, so I just screwed that in a little bit less than the other two. You can see some epoxy peeking out a little bit about the barrel there. Is there any on the other side? Can't really see it, but there's a little bit on the other side. And that is pretty much it when it comes to the excess from the out from the exterior. And so we will check this back in a little bit um, to see how hard the can of epoxy is that I mixed up and then we'll go from there the start is should look start um, uh, setting up good so we'll see I'm excited but also kind of concerned because I know the risks so we'll see see you later okay so hopefully you can see this I'm gonna I guess I'm just gonna take the screws out if I can hopefully they did not sealed in too much. Okay, front action screws coming out. That's good. So 
all the screws can come out, which is, you know, a good start. A little bit of pull there, may have been something right in the end there, but it's coming out. That is definitely a good sign. Definitely see some of the epoxy down in there. It's interesting. That one's free. change the camera angle so you can see if I can take this apart. Okay, so we got the barreled action. And hopefully it comes out. Might be a little hard. That's me going insane and unsuccessfully being able to get it out, but um, don't worry, I'm only hitting on a piece of rubber. It doesn't quite want to go. Well, I will try work on trying to get it out, and then I will show you once I get it out. Okay, so that didn't take much, it just took a little harder hit. Um, uh, some interesting things. So, the release agent worked pretty good, but not perfect, and I'm not quite sure why this is, but you can see on the tang there, there's a little piece of wood there, and then on the front, uh, behind a recoil lug, there's a little piece of wood. And so the epoxy actually stuck a little bit to the, to the barrel, and there are the action. So now there's a little bit of little pieces missing there. I still think it'll seat well in the action in the long run, and it should be fine. But that is just an interesting observation. Now, after we're done with this, we can remove all our tape. And tape didn't have to do too much, a little bit on the front there. Um, but yeah, I'll, sh get, I'll show you a better look at the, what the stock looks like once I remove all the tape. I hope the epoxy is placed in a way that it works. It doesn't, didn't form in exactly the manner which I thought it should, but I think it'll be, I think it'll work. I didn't, don't think I quite put enough on the front areas, but we'll see how the accuracy benefits from it. That will really be the test. This is the first time I'm doing this, so I guess I can See what I'm expecting for next time. I'm probably going to do this on Winchester Model 70 and 7 Magnum. It had its recoil lug bedded, but some of the bedding started like flaking off and coming out, so. I think it should probably be redone. Maybe a little better. So. Yeah, so we'll see how this does. See how much the barrel channel is floated. I'll probably still have to do some free floating on it, which I will show you. And then we'll go from there.
It did come out of the stock, which is huge. <laughs> I was really scared for a second there. But should be good. Not the prettiest stock, but does the job. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, the back, I just didn't bed that very much, but still, I think it'll still work well. So you can see, starting at the front, see there's that epoxy still didn't flow very much, because I don't think the barrel seated it in there very much. I think I need to actually go higher on the uh, barrel channel there. And then on the uh, re uh, flat there, it worked well. On the recoil log area, there's a lot of empty space, which doesn't make sense because that there was a big void in there. So I could have filled the whole thing up, and it could have helped it better. But I think it's think it'll be pretty good. Then back here, it just uh, flattened it out and filled it a little better. And then we, and then the next step here is to clean off the. Um, gun. The uh, stock should be good, but the gun, you need. we need to clean that off. And I've heard that a good way to clean it off is with uh, some acetone. So I will get that ready and then I'll start doing that. Our acetone. Uh, I guess I can just push through on top. Yeah. And we can wipe it, see how it does. Make sure just to get every single part that you put the uh, wax on. You don't want that stuff staying in that action. Various places will not be benefited from having that on, the, uh, having all that wax on it. I think I got a little epoxy there on the barrel, and the release agent did not remove it. So that is an unfortunate happening. So we'll have to experiment with a different style of wax or release agent next time, and maybe a different way of applying it. Maybe just more. Maybe I should just even go more all out and just because it's important that that works and it did I mean I got the gun out but wasn't perfectly how I wanted it but that's okay it's my first time I can't always get it right working pretty good, but not removing it as well as I'd like. Not terrible, though. Pretty good. Need to make sure get all the components. That magazine body was very uh, waxed well and it popped right out when it needed to. Probably my least favorite part of this rifle is this magazine body. It always 
pops out of the action when I don't want it to. Wait, annoying. That's a little bit. Shouldn't be too bad. It won't really matter. So that's ready. Yeah, just go in that slot there, you can see. There's a little slot there that this little tab goes into. This just. You have to get just right, and I just don't like that. Anyways, it's hardly important. And then we can get the rest of these pieces. Yeah, so if you're doing this, I think that uh, JB Weld Epoxy would definitely work well enough. If you apply it correctly, um, it's kind of hard to tell how much I should apply in the certain areas. So I guess you just go by feel as you get as you do it more. And uh, then, of course, for the release, I have a go. Now, it was definitely hard enough to take out of the stock, but I'm going to let it cure to its full 24 hours before I uh, put everything back together, and then I'll show you uh, that process, which you've seen in my other videos, but I might as well do it still. So, see you later. Okay guys, it's been 24 hours since I um, started the epoxy, so I'm going to put the gun back together. So first of all, we have our barreled action, and I'm going to reinstall the trigger. I have a uh, trigger video, a trigger installation video, so I will not um, worry about explaining this too much, but you got your trigger and your trigger spring and your trigger pin going to put the spring in there the trigger right on top of it make sure they're pushing on the right surfaces then you can push in the pin from the back side and on mine you don't even need to uh, worry about the uh, using a uh, punch to push it back in so that's all there is to that part of the assembly now it is time for the stock so we are magazine in make sure that is in and doesn't fall out we replace our stock Oh, that fits nice and firmly before. I don't know if I showed it, but I had like wiggle room in it. I have no wiggle room anymore in that at all, which is really good. Very promising. Have our uh, front action screw, our magazine, floor hinged floor plate. screw in. It formed like a nice little uh, uh, pillar around the um, screw hole for the front part of the action. Not as much in the back, rear part, but the front part of the action, so that goes in a little bit more firmly. And I kind of like that. 
rear action screw down where it should be and the middle one. So yeah, pretty simple when it comes to this, it's just a matter of making sure you do it right for the bedding. But yeah, we'll see if it enhances any of the accuracy. I've heard that when you do this, it makes torquing of the action with your screws less important. So, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Still make sure they're nice and tight. Good. You make sure you clean out the um, chamber in action in case there's any uh, debris still in there. So that would be kind of bad if there was and you went to shoot. So important that you do that and just run a patch down through it to ensure that there's nothing in there that's what I'm gonna do right now just to make sure oh is this even the right diameter yeah there we go in there anyways, but rather be safe than sorry. That's all there is to it. I'll have to check the barrel channel. Should might need some more free floating. But we'll get to that later. So I did want to check to see if it was a little bit free floated and it is at the end here where there used to be a raised um, ledge where the barrel used to rest, I kind of uh, cut that off, uh, cut that down a little bit one time, and I probably shouldn't have before I bedded it, but I did anyways. But anyway, so it's a little bit tough there, but it still slides right through, and uh, then this whole barrel channel, all the way to the bedding, which is right there, is free floated. So that is good. I'm going to probably free float this a little bit more, make sure it's pretty good, so starting right at the front, all the way to about there, so that is nice, so if you want to do something like that, yeah, this will definitely work. Uh, so yeah, um, I have some more videos coming out on this 243, had a um, trigger video for it, a um, some reloading videos, and we'll probably do some more on it. I like the gun, and uh, it's a good platform to do some just testing on, so that's what I will be doing. Um, if you like this video... Uh, please give it a thumbs up and um, subscribe so you can see more uh, videos like this. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get something going with this. Uh, we'll see you later and have a good day.